Hey guys, I'm really sorry that this video is late. I did say that I would put it up on Sunday, um, but I've been really busy and a little bit poorly. So yeah, lots of excitement over the weekend equals me having a bit of a crash on Sunday night, but hey, it's fine, it's okay. Um, so yeah, I had an amazing launch party on Saturday. My family came um, and various friends came and I met some interesting people who came randomly I think and ended up buying one of my books so that was good um and yeah it was it was a good night so I did a reading um and I did a QA and a with Nigel again um a couple of questions from Twitter Dane is back <laughs> hello <laughs> honestly the minute I get the camera out she was in Whisper's house just now like looking out at the world with criticism and the minute I get the camera out you want you want a fuss yeah so anyway, yes, um, I did that um, and then did some book signings and then went away um, and had some tea with um, Sarah's parents and brother and sister-in-law and then came back and we had a drag, drag artist, um, Foxy, do a gardening quiz for us, which was quite fun and yeah, so um, so this is the reading. So good Good afternoon everybody, welcome to Power Bowl. We've got uh, the lovely Jen Matthews with us this afternoon who is uh, here to launch the word Shimmer. And uh, first up she will do a, a reading from this new awesome book. Thank you Jen. So this bit of the book, um, Ruby, my nursing lecturer, has just come out of a lecture with one of her students who's caused a bit of chaos. Um, and she's meeting Mel, who is my paramedic, in the pub for a drink. Mel sipped the cool beer and hummed her approval. A nice pipe with some soft music and the appeal of a, a pretty woman about to join me. What more could a girl wish for? She'd made an effort, but not too much. Clean jeans, a blue tank top and red checkered shirt with the sleeves rolled up to the elbow and fastened with the handy little buttons the manufacturer had provided. She pushed her walking boot, she brushed her walking boots and the hems of her jeans fell in a way she liked over the black laces. She'd even managed to put studs in her ears and tie her hair in a neat ponytail. Facing the main door to the pub, she watched a few people come and go. When a woman with dark wavy hair entered, holding her beige jacket around her from the chill of outside, Mel sat up straighter and held up her hand. Her cheeks a bit pink, Ruby flopped back into the chair opposite. Mel chuckled and reached to pat her hand, feeling the difference between Ruby's frosty fingers and her own warm ones. You look like you could do with a pint. Ruby made some kind of acknowledging groan. What are you drinking? Mel held up her drink. Carlsberg okay? Ruby just nodded. Not just a wine drinker then. It's nice to see some chinks in that refined armour. When Mel returned to the table, Ruby took a little less time like... Oh, Ruby looked a little less like she died from exhaustion. Mel set the, set the glass onto a beer mat and returned to her own half empty drink, which had condensation running down the sides. So, how was your day? Mel asked, trying to brighten her voice as much as possible. The effect was instant. Ruby's eyes met hers and she smiled. She seemed to think hard for a few seconds before saying, penis filled. Mel spat out a mouthful of beer onto the table, her hands flying to her mouth. I'm so sorry, she said, grabbing a napkin with the little, uh, from the little caddy on the table and mopping up. But what? Ruby appeared chuffed to bits with her shocking revelation, but grabbed a napkin too to help. My lovely student from hell managed to hack into my projector in room 17 and up popped the most distasteful picture of an erect penis I've ever seen. Ruby's expression was much more placid than Mel thought her own must have been. Honestly, it barely looked real. Mel spluttered and took a re restoring mouthful of beer, this time without spitting it all over the table. She swallowed carefully and then looked back up at Ruby, who was smirking. I'm going to need more detail. She thought it was funny. Oh, a prank. Mel coughed, some residual beer lingering in her windpipe. Hope you give her hell. I did speak to her about it, yes. Ruby's mouth became a thin line, and Mel's body felt heavy. She works hard at teaching others to nurse. She doesn't deserve that kind of joke to be played on her. Did she apologise? Nope. Hmm. Mel leaned an elbow on the table and rested her chin in it. 
she idly played with a single droplet of condens condensation that was making it wet its way to the beer mat under her glass. She seems to want to humiliate me at every opportunity. Ruby sighed, mirroring Mel's stance and drinking heavily from her pint. Good job you're well acquainted with male genitalia, Mel said, but then sat up biting her lip. Oh, I, I didn't mean... I know you didn't. Ruby smirked again, apparently amused that for once she was not the one blushing. And for the record, my acquaintance, as you put it, during the last 15 years has been purely professional. Finally, she tells me. Their gaze is locked. The music played softly in the pub, ended and began again, something slower and more peaceful. A slot machine chimed musically from the other side of the room and a couple more patrons entered from outside, their voices muffled. So she's gay then, or she is now, or she's bisexual. Why am I labelling her? Mel blinked a few times to clear her thoughts before sitting back against the bench and regarding Ruby with interest. That's good to know. I thought you might say that, Ruby said, pink blossoming on her cheekbones. Mel spent a beat longer smiling at Ruby before remembering the topping in hand. So this student, she's still being a nightmare? Yep, there isn't a single lesson I have her in where she doesn't do something disruptive. Rude pictures and comments, trying to get me off topic, making fun of me accent. I like your accent, Mel said plainly. Do you? It's nice. She shrugged and looked away from a minute, deciding this wasn't exactly the context to be telling Ruby she thought her accent attractive. Focus. It suits you. Do your girls have the same accent? I moved down here before I met their father, so no. They are very they are very much southwesterners. Somehow Mel got the feeling this was a bone of contention between mother and daughters. She needs sorting out, Mel said, referring to the student. You offer in? Ruby asked, and Mel nearly spat a beer out again. If you like, you could tell her I know how to kill someone as well as how to save them. Is that what they teach in the ECB training? Ruby laughed and lifted her glass in a salute. Who'd have thought? Those advanced assessment skills aren't just for the poorlies, they come in very handy as assassination techniques. They ended up clinking pipes, just because, and settling into small talk again. By the time eight o'clock rolled round, they were drinking coke and laughing into the cheerful air between them. Mel was warm all over, despite the draft every time someone entered the small pub, and she was feeling a sort of pull towards Ruby that she hadn't felt in a long time. In the end, Ruby leant forward on the table, her hands clasped. Mel's gaze tracked from her elbows down her slim arms that held a scattering of dark moles to her hands. Her nails were neat, her fingers neither long nor short. She wore a single silver wig, ring on the middle finger of her right hand and a simple watch adorned her wrist. Fiddling with her glass for a second, Mel reached out to touch a fingertip to Ruby's silver ring. She had an overwhelming urge to take a hand and fit their fingers together across the table, but she refrained. Where's your ring from? My mother brought it, bought it for me after I got divorced. From the girl's dad? Mel bit her lip and hoped she wasn't delving too deep. That's right. To Mel's surprise, Ruby stretched her fingers out to touch them to Mel's. She said one should always have a ring on, even if one isn't married. Laughing a bit, she gazed down at their touching hands. I forget what her explanation was, but I like it. It's simple, classy, Mel said, and cleared her throat when she heard her own voice was scratchy. She took a chance and tickled the skin of Ruby's finger right by her ring. Then, with a burst, burst of courage, she reached to gather Ruby's fingers in her own, her heart pounding and her hands felt sweaty, but she didn't want to pull away. Listen. Their eyes locked again, and Mel opened her mouth to ask the question she'd been wanting to ask since October. Ruby's phone rang. Valu. I didn't want to do too long a reading um, because I want to hook people in rather than give people like plot and stuff. Um, so yeah, so I did a reading and then we had a Q&A, which is really awesome. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. All I can say is I know a part of the crowd bar. My name is Todd, by the way, also known as Foxy. I'm a drag queen who works in here, so I'll be in here later. Crowd bar is very excited to have you here, so thank you for coming and having you a bit like this. Thank you. Has anybody got questions? Thank you, Robert. I've also got one from Twitter, so. 
Oh, technology. Oh, technology. Yeah. yeah. So, as this is your second book, how long did it take you to write it compared to the first? Was it quicker or easier? It was a lot quicker. For some reason, I managed to w re uh, write the word Shimmer in 40 days, like the first draft. I can't even write my name in 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a bit insane because, so, um, Hooked on You, I just kind of wrote when and as and when I wanted to. Maybe it took me four months-ish because I wasn't planning on sending it out. Um, but I did and I got a contract for it. Um, but the words shimmer, I'd, I'd kind of said to my publisher, look, I, I've got this idea, what do you think? And they'd said, yeah, sure, go for it, write it, um, and then we'll see. And I, I track my progress usually, so I put the date and how many words I've written and like how many scenes I've completed. And yeah, from, from start to finish, that was 40 days. That was last January. So organised, I don't even know where my socks are. <laughs> so, next question. Uh, when did you come up with the, with the books scenario? How long did it take? Um, Again, I don't days. remember, actually. <laughs> um, I literally can't remember at all. Um, I wanted to write about a paramedic because that's what my wife is. And um, Mel does the uh, emergency care practitioner training, which is what Sarah did last year. Um, so I wanted to have something with a paramedic in it because I know about paramedics and I have the sources to research them. Um, so. Yeah, but I, I don't actually, I'm not sure. I think I just came up with the idea and then I tend to plot quite heavily so I, I know exactly what, where I'm going with the story. Inspirational. We have a 999 party going on tonight with me, so if you want to come along to that, you might get a bit of discount. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Um, as an inspiring novelist myself, what advice would you give in taking, uh, taking the first leap, getting work published? Okay, so where, I think I've said this um, before in my last Q&A. Um, so basically, you write what you want. You are not going to get a contract with anybody without having written something to kind of show them. Um, and you need to find a publisher that will publish it. There's no point in sending loads of manuscripts to publishers that are just not looking for your genre. So um, our, my publisher, Ilva, um, they get regular people sending them stuff that isn't even lesbian fiction. And they're just like, well, we're not going to publish that, are we? Because this is what we want to publish, you know, these, these are the things. Um, and then look at the submission criteria. Again, there's no point in sending something to somebody if what they don't, what they want is a, a covering letter or stuff they're not even gonna look at, things like that. If you can't follow a submission guideline, they're not gonna even consider you because how are you gonna follow instructions from an editor? Well, do you ever get people sent the same books to you to read through? I have had hopefully people say can you be to read this for me or I've written this thing can you read it for me and I've been like I don't have time too busy I'm like yeah lady. I work full time and you know I'd love to be able to help out people but at the same time I know my limitations I don't have a lot of energy so I need to make sure I'm doing the things that I need to be doing rather than helping other people but actually to be fair if somebody's written something and they want to send it me I'll know very quickly whether it's good or not. Um, I think somebody sent me a couple of books, ebooks, recently, a couple of weeks ago, and I read the first chapter and I just couldn't read anymore. Um, and they were like, "Shall I get it published? Shall I self-publish it?" And I was like, "Have you got an editor?" And they were like, "No." I was like, "You need an editor. <laughs> Go find yourself a good editor that's qualified." And she was like, oh, "Okay." So, yeah. <laughs> I think I do. Yes, I had. I had three editors for Hooked on You, and I had two editors for. The what do they do? Just check for like spelling mistakes? And no. Grammar, so or... initially you get a developmental or content, content editor who goes through the story and says, okay, this character's annoying, change her. Mm. Or um, this character, I don't know why she's done this, you need to explain, or she needs to do something else. Um, or so they have to help you more than yeah, yeah. to edit your work? Yeah, so I just, um, I had the editorial letter for my new book. It doesn't have a title yet, but it's my physio pop romance. Um, the initial letter, you get a letter, so it's not just word, word document with comments and things. You get a proper letter and you have to go through it. It's taking me ages, but it's fine. It's, it's good fun. Um, and you, yeah, it's to improve the story basically and make sure the characters are all different or doing things that they should be doing. Well, there's something you enjoy. Yeah. You want to work hard on something you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, how much of the plot is in your head when you first start writing? All of it. I have it all plotted out before I even started writing. So the words shimmer, um, I changed. So after 
uh, in the editing process, I, I changed some of the scenes around with kind of suggestions from the editor. Um, but I literally, I do a table and I have a little box at the end of the table and I put each scene in and when I've written that, I take it off. <laughs> I bet she's the one that does the shopping list. I don't even know, no. <laughs> Sarah is the organised one. I, I'm organised when it comes to crochet and writing, but apart from that... I can't even organise that at the moment. Yeah. Uh, following the success of your first book, where do you... What was that saying? Were, oh, were you apprehensive about writing the second? Initially writing it, no. Um, I've had some ARC reviews um, that have said that it's not as good as the first book, so that was a bit sad. Um, but people who have read it since then have been more complimentary. So I think it coming out was more worrying for me than actually writing it, because I like writing and whilst I'm writing, not really thinking about how it's going to do, I just think about getting the story out and enjoying writing it. So. Do you get to see like, the making of the book as well when they're like printing it? Yeah, and stuff so. Like that. Um, in like a, the factory when they start printing I don't, it? To, I don't go to the factory. Oh, see, I would find that really interesting. <laughs> I don't know where they're printed actually. They're printed in the UK. Um, my publisher is German, so they're in okay. Germany. Um, but obviously, they're not going to use a printing um, company in Germany because it costs a stupid amount to send them over. Because they have um, US authors as well. Oh, and, okay. And Oz authors too. Um, so they use local. Global. I know they use lo um, local printing presses to do do the books. Um, but I get to, I get kind of almost final say on the cover. So I'll fill in a form that says what you fancy on your cover, and I'll fill it in, and they'll come up with something, and I'll go, yeah, that's okay, or I don't like that. And um, the initial cover design for the Witch Emma was horrible. I didn't like it at all. Mm. It was kind of watercolour, and uh, it was just like. So, um, yeah, they came up with that one, and that, I, I love that. It's, like <laughs> it's when you've got it in your head, isn't it? And when you see it printed. Yeah. Like your vision. It's very on exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Um, is there anything you, uh, you want to write about that you haven't yet? Oh, loads of stuff. So, book three, which doesn't have a title yet, is um, so we've got a, a black character from Zimbabwe. I wanted to do a, like, like a, different, a different culture in there. Um, and um, there isn't a lot of women of colour written about <coughs> much, there's some, and they're written about brilliantly usually, um, but I, I wanted to write about somebody from a different country, that was quite fun. Um, so I've already written um, a story about two women that meet on a mental health ward, um, hopefully that will be published in the next couple of years, but not quite yet because it's a bit darker. Um, and my fourth book is going to be about um, a woman who is in recovery, so she um, attends AA, she has an issue with drink, and then I have uh, a pregnant lady as well who's decided to be myself. And the one that should be about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, well, I have a trans character in my fourth book, but I might do drag queens in my yeah. dad's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you a bit. Yay. I'm dyslexic, but you yeah, know, I'll help you. Fine. Can you describe the feeling when you get your book printed? So when I get my parcel through. Yeah, and when you see the book. And... So I think the first book, um, I was a bit more excited mostly because it was delivered and I was home. <laughs> Have you got it on a shelf? Yeah, because <laughs> Sarah always gets the first copy that I take out. Oh, of does she sign it for you? Of course. Of course, yeah. Right answer. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, getting the... The, the first copies of Flipped on You was pretty awesome. It's a massive two, it was two boxes, wasn't it? Because I ordered 60 copies, um, which is a bit mad. <laughs> but you needed muscles to pick that up. Yeah, didn't pretty you? much. Um, and yeah, the word shimmer was good, but I had to go to the UF, UPS depot to get it. So it was a bit of a, like, I know I'm going to get it. So there's a bit of build up to it and chucked it in the back of my car and came home and then got to open it. It was lovely. But I thought this one, I did think this one was going to look different. I don't know why. I didn't realise it was going to be quite so light, and I like it, it's lovely, but I think my expectations were a little bit different, I thought it would be a bit darker, but it's, it's cool, I like it, it's cool. Do you get to see like prototypes before it's yeah. printed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, sent me, they sent me the cover design, oh, okay. um, the whole kind of the flat book, so with the spine and everything, so I get to see that. There's before. nothing better though about feeding all the pages yes. and smelling the fresh book. And... <laughs> So that's all the questions for here. Should we go on to Twitter? Um, was one of those, yeah, was one of those was from Nat. So we've already done her. So let's just check the hashtag, see if there's any more. That was one I looked a minute ago. No, we've only had the one from Nat, but that's cool. Awesome. 
Well, I just want to say thank you so much for being at the Proud Bar. Again, I'll be here tonight. We're going to have a bit of a quiz. And then after that, we've got the 999 party with me, Foxy. So I'm Todd right now. I'm like a bisexual stream right now. Like, <laughs> Bless you. But I can't thank you enough for being in the Proud Bar. We really appreciate you being here. And all the best for your next tour. And if you haven't got it already, where can you buy it? So you can get it off the Ilva website. And if you do that, I get all royalties. So feel free. You can get the ebook off the Ilva website. It's 9.99 at the moment. Um, Bargain. You, I know. Or you can go to um, Amazon and they're selling the, the paperbacks on Amazon. So. Amazing. Well, thank you so much again. And all the best for your next book. Thank you. So thank you to everybody who came and um, thank you to Nige for um, providing the prize for the quiz, which was awesome. Um, and also the venue, of, obviously, as well. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll have one next July when my next book comes out, which is my physio cop, cop, cop book. Physio cop book. <laughs> um, which doesn't quite have a title yet, but I'm getting there with having a think. Cool, see you guys later.